Hi guys, how are you? My name is Zura and today we're going to have a code challenge. In my previous video we talked about asynchronous programming. Uh, we talked about the event loop. Uh, we talked about promises and callbacks and we explained the callback hell which is for a nesting callbacks. And when then we converted our callback hell into a nice promise chain which makes code really readable. If you haven't watched these videos, I really recommend you to re to watch them. You can find the link in the description of the video. Then we talked about async and await keywords, which makes code even more readable when we're working with promises. And then we talked about browser new fetch function, fetch API, which is for fetching resources. And today we're going to combine all of them, at least try to combine all of them to have a nice code challenge. For this code challenge, we are going to use Giphy API. We're going to see how we can register there. First, we need to create an app uh, and then we take the API key, put it in our code and we can make requests using this API key. Thanks for watching. Stay subscribed. Let's start. Today, we're going to create this small, tiny, tiny, but really awesome app. We're going to search for GIFs and we're going to see uh, top five. So let's search for JavaScript and here are JavaScript GIFs. Uh, let's search for Jim Carrey and waiting for until GIFs are loaded and we have them. This is the purpose of today's code challenge. Type developers.giphy.com in your browser. You can find the link in the description. You need to sign up. Uh, if you are already signed up, just log in and you will be redirected to your dashboard where you need to create your first app. I'm going to create my app and call it async challenge. And app description is something what you want to use this app for. So, teaching purposes. Create new app. It needs a couple of seconds and it will give me uh, my app key. Here is my app and here is my key. I'm going to copy my key and put in the global JS. You can find this project. This is a seed project. And you can find the link of this project in the video description. I uploaded the project as an initial initial version um, on my GitHub, and you can find it there. And uh, there is also a final version already uploaded. So I'm gonna if you open your initial version uh, and go to the global JS. Here is a Giphy key, and put your Giphy key here. I'm gonna paste my key here. And that's it. I can now start working. Uh, the main file uh, we're going to work is app.js. I have prepared some CSS and HTML also for this project, um, which I am not going to focus right now. So I'm going to focus on app.js, making in asynchronous calls, returning result, working with promises, and so on. If you're interested uh, about some CSS and HTML stuff also, just leave comments below and I can, I can help with this. And if you are also interested to see some DOM videos from me, leave comments below. Okay, let's start. Now we're going to make a request. For making a request, let's explore Giphy API, how to make a, a search request. If you go to the docs uh, and scroll down a little bit, we have this, this search which uh, gives us detailed information how we can make search. But before that, we have simple example using different languages. Code examples, here they are. So. Python, JavaScript, Ruby, PHP, and so on. This is our uh, search URL, where we are searching this Q parameter, API key, and limit how many GIFs we want to grab. Let's copy this URL and write 
a browser fetch function uh, fe using fetch API to grab our GIFs. Fetch my URL and I'm going to replace my API key with GIF key. And my query is something which I will ac accept in my Giphy search. So here's my keyword. I'm going to put my keyword here. And here's my string. So the full URL, I'm passing API key search and limit. I want to grab uh, five, uh, five GIFs. And let's return the result, which is a, which is a promise. As I mentioned before, I have prepared some uh, JavaScript methods also. Um, if you have downloaded our, our initial code, you can find the code there. So for appending an image in the container, showing loader um, and hide loader, and we're listening to the form submit event. And when the form submit happens, we're taking this search value and passing it to the um, main function. So. One thing which I missed is that main function doesn't accept our search keyword. So let's accept it. Search keyword. And let's use our Giphy search method passing this keyword, which returns a promise. I'm gonna, and I want to see the result returned from my promise. So there are two options. Either I can write then here, and this is my response, and I'm gonna print my response here. And here's my result when my when I make a search, JavaScript, and here it is. I'm gonna expand my console. I will zoom in also. Here's my response returned from the fetch which has this uh, JSON, JSON method, and I want to see what's the actual result returned from this Giphy API. So I'm gonna print um, JSON, which is also a promise, as I, as I explained in my previous video. So better will be if I return another promise from this fetch, so response, corresponds to response JSON, and this returns a new promise, which is a promise for actual result. And let's print my result here, and I'm gonna call my variable result also, JavaScript. Here is my result. It has data, which is an array containing five elements. We grabbed uh, five GIFs, so this is it. And each of them has a lot of information actually there. You can explore it yourself. I'm not gonna spend time on this right now. Um, I'm gonna to go to the images and take original one. So result, then data, which is an array. Then for each of them has images and take original which is an object also and has a URL in it. Let's first iterate over each of them and print the URL. The second way of grabbing a result is using async and await keywords. So instead of uh, writing a then on the promise, we can actually write, uh, we can create a variable result await if you search and of course, let const, Oops. and we can uh, make the function asynchronous. So here is my result. I'm gonna iterate over result data for each uh, data. Data has images, data, images, original url.log and I'm printing this printing this console log statement. Okay, I'm searching. I have an error. Great, original. Search JavaScript. Here are my URLs. 
Now I'm going to create an image object passing this append image um, function uh, and it will it will display it automatically. So I'm going to create an image let emg is new image emg source is my data images original URL. I'm going to delete my console log statement and passing this to append image. Okay, JavaScript. Okay, here they are, but we see how they are rendered. Let's do it again for for Gene Carry. And we, we saw how it was rendered and we also left our previous GIFs. We need to clear the current uh, set of images until we push new one. So the container where we actually push um, images is called thumbs. If you expand your append image, you can see there's this thumbs div and I'm appending my image there. So I'm gonna, before I start iterating over images, I'm going to grab my div and make it empty. Okay, that's one thing. Jim carry. Now it's loaded immediately because the images are cached in browser. But if you right click on this reloader, empty cache and hard reload, and then you search, you see how images are loaded. And we need to, we need to show nice preloader until they are fully loaded. For this, we can start preloader here, show loader, but we need an event when all images return loading. Image has an onload event, onload, which is a function, and we can print console log statement for each image image loaded. Let's run JavaScript, image loaded, and all of them are actually loaded, but we don't uh, hide our show loader, so this will, this will be uh, endlessly loading. So let's reload this again. We have our event, and we need to keep track if all of them are loaded. So we know how many images we have, its result data length, and we need to keep track how many images are already actually logged. So I'm going to create a new variable, uh, loaded counter, which is a zero. And whenever an image is loaded, I'm going to increment my variable and variable. And as soon as my loaded counter is my result data length, I'm going to hide my loader. And let's see. So, gene carry. Okay, it's fast, clear cache. Gene carry, loading, and then it's disappeared as soon as for all of them is loaded. Here we can do another thing. We know uh, we talked about promise all method, which is in, uh, for when working multiple promises. Actually, what we can do here is we can uh, make our image on load as a promise. So let's create a new function on image load, which accepts an image and returns a promise. Return new promise, which accepts an executor function. Result reject. It listens on image onload event, and whenever onload happens, it calls resolve. And here, instead of attaching onload listener, 
we are gonna we're gonna accept a promise. So I'm gonna call on image load, passing an image there, which returns a promise, and I'm gonna save my promise in a list. Let promises is a list, and I'm gonna push my return promise in a promise list. And when the for loop is finished, I'm gonna call promise all for my promises which returns a new promise when all of them are resolved and resolved and this is my function which will be executed this is my callback function which will be executed when all images are loaded and I'm gonna uh, write console log statement here all are loaded and I'm gonna hide my loader here Jim carry loading all are loaded is printed in console log and loader is disappeared. You decide which one is the better, but actually um, I, I, I showed you two ways how you can keep track when um, many things are loaded. If you, your environment doesn't support promises, then you have to use uh, the first way, attaching on load listener uh, on your own and keeping track your counter. Um, but if you uh, if you ha have support promises, you can do this way also. Probably you think that um, we can write a wait keyword here, and this will give us uh, when the image is loaded. And let's make this function asynchronous. So this will give us uh, an event when the image is loaded. Here we know that the image is loaded. Okay, um, and when can we write our hide up? Uh, hide loader method uh, let's write here uh, we don't need the promises right now okay um, and then maybe some of them thinks that uh, the hide loader will be uh, will be executed when this for each loop is finished and when all images are loaded but that's that's not quite true. As far as each of the, each callback function of this for each runs asynchronously, uh, all of these uh, callback functions will be run immediately. Then hide loader will be run, and then uh, each of them will be loaded. So we cannot actually um, we can't actually have an event listener when all images are loaded if we use async and await keywords at this point. But what we can do here is uh, return to our promise code, which is, which is this, return to our promise code and, and instead of writing uh, promise all and then uh, callback, we can write await directly here we know that promise all returns a promise. So we can write await here and we can delete this callback and here is the code which will work. We don't have this callback function anymore and this is much more readable. We are gathering promises uh, in the synchronous code. Nothing is asynchronous here now. In the synchronous code we are gathering promises and then when we have all promises, we're waiting until all of them are resolved and we are uh, hiding the loader. Let's try this also. And here it is. This is the end of the video. Let me know your opinion. This is actually my first code challenge. Um, and I'm really interested about your opinion. Um, what you liked, what you didn't like and you want to improve. And also let me know if you want me to continue these kind of code challenges uh, to practice. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.